Hi everyone, um, thank you for joining us for this event this morning. So for those who don't know me, I'm Associate Professor Amy MacDonald and I'm a leader of Charles State University's STEM Education Research Group. I'd like to just take a moment to introduce my co-leader, Associate Professor Lena Denea. And I'd also like to introduce Ms. Sibella Seidler from Little Scientists Australia and Mr. Older Lorenzen from Froebel Australia, who are co-hosting the event today. I'll begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of the various lands on which we live and work. I pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging and extend those respects to any Indigenous colleagues who are with us today. So welcome to the launch of the position statement on early childhood STEM education, which has been co-developed by Charles Sturt University's STEM Education Research Group, Little Scientists Australia, which is an initiative of Froebel Australia. So together we've taken actions to increase understandings of effective early childhood STEM education through our research, advocacy and professional engagement. Today, we're going to hear from a panel of experts in early childhood STEM um, as we celebrate the official launch of this position statement. We have purposefully chosen today to celebrate the launch as it marks the fifth anniversary of Little Scientists as a federally funded early STEM program in Australia. So congratulations to all involved in the program. Let's hear now from our invited speakers. We're going to begin with Alder, who is the managing director of Froebel Australia. Froebel is a not-for-profit organisation that operates bilingual early learning centres in Sydney and Melbourne. Alder is responsible for launching Little Scientists as a professional development initiative in 2013. Over to you, Alder. Uh, thank you so much, Amy, for, for your kind introduction. Um, and hello, everyone. Welcome uh, to this exciting launch event uh, on this beautiful Tuesday morning. Um, I want to start uh, and share um, a small anecdote with you and, and Amy has already given a little bit of that away um, because on, on this uh, very day, five years ago, almost at the exact same time, um, we were nervously standing in front of the National Press at the Mother Teresa Early Learning Centre in Canberra, uh, together with uh, then Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull, who announced that our Little Scientist program would be endorsed by the Australian government. And not only endorsed, uh, even more importantly for us at the time, also funded uh, under the National Innovation and Science Agenda. Um, as you can imagine, uh, that announcement marked a huge milestone, not, not only for, for Froebel um, uh, as a not-for-profit organization, but also for the progress uh, that we had made. Um, it showed to us that decision makers, uh, in particularly in Canberra, began to acknowledge uh, not only the importance of STEM education, but of starting STEM education in the early years through age-appropriate inquiry-based uh, STEM exploration. Um, that government funding five years ago opened a whole new world of opportunities um, for us to, to advocate uh, for and to expand our program across Australia. Uh, it helped making the program accessible to early childhood educators and teachers from Hobart to Darwin, uh, and from Perth to Sydney. And through these early childhood educators to tens of thousands of girls and boys uh, in the early learning. Um, since uh, that announcement uh, and together with our 40 plus local network partners, um, we have trained six and a half thousand early childhood educators and teachers. Um, and reached more than 1,800 education and care services uh, in all states and territories. Um, most importantly, um, our little scientist educators are not only based in our big cities, in Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, Perth, they are in the Northern Territory. 334 of them live and work in Alice Springs, in Catherine, in Darwin, some 250 are based in Tasmania. 
many dozens in, in Elbury, Wodonga. Um, the latter thanks to, to our partnership with the, um, with the Toyota Community Trust. So I guess what, um, what makes us most proud is uh, the fact that through our many successful collaborations, which we have built over the years, we have been able to bring early STEM education even to many areas in, in regional and uh, rural Australia that so often that are so often deprived of um, rich professional development opportunities. Um, Charles Sturt University and uh, with the university, the amazing Amy McDonald, who you just met, um, they have been part of our journey uh, for many years. Um, they have undertaken a long-term evaluation of the impact of our little scientist program throughout the initial government funding term. Um, their findings, and, and I, I believe you can access the report uh, online, um, their findings have been so encouraging and, and so motivating that we have continued our work together beyond the initial evaluation process uh, and with our uh, joint position statement today, you can see one of those outcomes uh, of our collaboration. Um, the, the launch of this statement today obviously marks uh, a new milestone in our mission to further promote, um, further expand, further celebrate uh, early STEM education. Um, and we are super excited um, to share that the Australian government just announced a couple of weeks ago um, that they will continue to contribute funding to the Little Scientist Program for another five years. So with that and with these uh, fantastic views, I'll hand back to, to Amy. Thank you, Alder, and that's been a wonderful tour of the, the history and accomplishments of uh, Little Scientists under the umbrella of the Froebel Foundation. Thank you. Okay, we will turn now to Associate Professor David Smith, who is the head of the School of Education at Charles Sturt University. David is an internationally recognised learning technologist, and he is a valued member of CSU STEM Education Research Group. Thank you for being with us this morning, David. Thank you, Amy. <clears throat> I too would like to acknowledge the First Nations people who are the traditional owners and custodians of the lands on which we are meeting today. Well, the first um, advice in the position statement says, take guidance from children's cues and questions. There is such great potential in seeing the world through the eyes of a child. Michelle Simmons, our 2018 Australian of the Year, said that she was always curious about the world, even if the adults around her uh, were unaware of just how curious she was. Um, a hero of mine, uh, Paul Dirac, uh, was sent to the library uh, in, in his early years of education because the teacher couldn't cope with his, his questions and the rest of the education of the boys um, in the classroom. I want to um, acknowledge um, the collaboration uh, between uh, Froebel Australia and Charles Sturt University. Uh, there has been such groundbreaking work, I suggest, in getting to this stage. The position statement um, reflects the um, amount of initiative and motivation that from many uh, collaborators uh, to achieve what you have to this date. In hearing uh, what um, the accomplishments that Old recounted to us um, just, just a few minutes ago, it's, it's amazing um, to think of where you started and where we are now. Um, and I don't say this in a negative sense, but how much further there is to go. And I'm very proud that um, Charles Sturt University uh, School of Education and the STEM Research Group is part of this initiative. Um, as Amy has told you, um, I am a learning technologist, but many, many years ago, I started off life as a maths and English teacher. 
And um, one of the um, joys um, was, was taking um, students away from the classroom, away from the textbook and getting them to experience uh, mathematics um, outside in the real world uh, and to apply mathematics where they could um, to increase their love of learning um, and their love of mathematics. I, um, I think that we have a lot of um, foundational work to, to further develop in, in STEM education because um, as we, we have struggled for many years to get the education platform correct. Uh, and that's not blaming anybody. Um, we have pursued a traditional um, educational stance uh, and I suggest that hasn't worked. And taking again words from Michelle Simmons, she said that we need to engage children from the very early years. And I want to acknowledge that this is what Little Scientists is doing and the importance of such work as we further STEM education. Indeed, the cause of education, not just STEM. Uh, because I think even though we are focusing on STEM, we are really looking at that education is a winner here. So uh, without further words from me, I want to um, endorse uh, Charles Sturt's participation, uh, thank everybody involved in getting this uh, position statement ready. It is a very wholesome and conclusive and groundbreaking piece of work. Uh, congratulations to all involved and many more successful years as we move forward and create the future scientists in the year 2020, uh, sorry, 2030. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, really appreciate your endorsement. And as always, thank you for your very um, enthusiastic, heartfelt and insp inspirational words. So thank you. Okay, uh, next, it's my pleasure to invite Dr. Leanne Gibbs, who is the Senior Manager of Engagement and Translation at Early Start at the University of Wollongong. She is the former CEO of Community Childcare New South Wales and is an expert on leadership and public policy in early education and care. And we're very delighted to have you here today, Leanne. Thank you very much, um, Amy. And I will say that uh, I'm not officially a doctor yet, but I certainly hope my examiners are watching the screen today and giving that a positive thumbs up. So <laughs> thank you very much, Amy. I've jumped um, the gun. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but you know, we do what we can. <laughs> thank you. Um, so today I'm talking to you from uh, Darawal land uh, in the beautiful, um, Sutherland Shire of New South Wales, and it is beautiful land. I pay my respects to elders past, present and future as well. It's wonderful to be involved in this um, experience in the launch of the statement, and uh, also having been involved with the work and a great admirer of the work of little scientists. And I think it's testament to that work um, that this there is more funding that has been allocated to uh, the, the program because I think that at the moment we know that this is a kind of a rare thing. So wonderful. Um, so I'm going to talk very briefly about inquiry-based learning, but I would never consider myself an expert in this area. I'm an early childhood educator at heart and by training in my original, my original qualifications, but I believe that there are some incredible um, educators who are far more better positioned to talk about this, but I am going to talk about something that makes the practices of inquiry-based learning possible. But first, I will briefly say that inquiry-based learning is absolutely essential for our future in the world. We do need the creative, innovative thinkers, and they, those children are actors in their own lifelong learning. We have problems that we don't even know we, we need to solve yet. And I think this year has been a great example of how innovation and creativity and uh, really deep thinking is required. And this is what we have when we have inquiry-based learning. Uh, and it's really fundamental to the well-being of our planet 
and it's fundamental to the well-being of uh, humankind and uh, all, all things that are existing on our planet. And this is based in wonder, curiosity, problem solving, collaboration and so on. All of those beautiful words that you see on the screen that are at the heart of inquiry-based learning. And this is not just learning that happens for children. This is learning that happens for children and adults and other beings side by side and together. But my interest is in what actually makes inquiry-based learning possible. And you can see I've got some uh, pictures on the right-hand side of, uh, on the left-hand side, we've got our children involved in their inquiry-based learning. And then I'll just briefly mention what makes it actually possible for inquiry-based learning to happen in a deep and authentic way. We've got to have the great relationships and we have to have the professional language that we use around inquiry-based learning. And that's very important in our relationships with children, with families and with educators. We also have to have the resources of uh, things like wonderful programs like um, Little Scientists and the way in which people develop their knowledge and their skills in the area of inquiry-based learning. So at the heart of any inquiry-based learning is the knowledge and the skills of the educators. And these are learned through qualifications and through programs like Little Scientists. We also have to have the material resources in order to ensure that inquiry-based learning is authentic and moves forward. And you can see that beautiful picture of children working with real resources and real materials. Their learning is, is really authentic here because they're using real life materials um, and things that they have to manipulate and, and learn to use uh, with each other. And then I want to say that there's things like um, these uh, wonderful statements that we have, this statement around STEM education. And these lie at the heart of inquiry-based learning when people can share some knowledge and share an understanding of um, the sort of common language and mission and direction that we want to take inquiry-based learning in. And this is where a statement like this one on STEM education really gives us a foundation for our knowledge and for our learning and for planning in what I um, sort of been saying is early childhood services, but more broadly as well, so that there's a shared understanding amongst all of the actors in our world of inquiry-based learning. So these are the things like the language and the culture that we develop around inquiry-based learning, the sorts of material resources that we allocate to uh, that the support inquiry-based learning, and then the foundation statements that we have that support inquiry-based learning. So I'm actually going to conclude there, but I just want to say that I think this is a, a, a wonderful initiative and inquiry-based learning and curiosity and innovation is at the heart of uh, our well-being and the planet's well-being. And these are the sorts of ways that we can really authentically move into the future. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you for talking us through some of the guiding principles of the approach of Little Scientists, but also that underpin this position statement. And as always, you're such an advocate for the professionalism of early childhood educators. So thank you for your words. I now have great pleasure to introduce Professor Lynn Beasley. Lynn is a science ambassador and a former chief scientist of Western Australia. Lynn's many honours include Officer of the Order of Australia and a fellow of the Australian College of Educators. Lynn, we are so pleased you can be with us. It's very generous of you to be here. So early WA time, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's such an honour to be part of this. You're so right. I was honoured to be the chief scientist of Western Australia. And that really exposed me to the importance of early childhood education and STEM in particular. And, you know, just to acknowledge, for me, it's the Noongar Nation here in Western Australia, how out there are first scientists. And my gosh, in that community, you teach science from day one. You walk through the environment, you look at the sky, you see the pattern of the tides. All this is science. So I want to see every person in Australia, every young person getting the best opportunity because we want it to work for all Australians. 
you know, one of the two things I did as chief scientist that I most love was to be part of something called Toddler Fest. And this happened at the equivalent of Questacom, our um, SciTech. It was for the youngest ones. From the minute you could toddle, you could be in there. And the young people were so enjoying. They were meeting. We had little chicks. We had all sorts of things, rockets, you name it, that kids would love, little volcanoes exploding. We saw those kids coming back year on year. And now we're seeing them in high school. They were inspired from day one. You can never start too early. But the wonderful thing about it too was that the parents said, I can actually teach science at home. I can be doing it with my kids. You know, when we're cooking, then we'll talk about science. When we're in the garden, we'll plant things and they'll see them grow and learn about the seasons and the like. So the families were enriched by that too. And I think that was really important. The other thing I did was to introduce a microscopes in schools program through the wonderful Rotary Clubs here. So every the idea was that every year five and six student would have their own microscope so that they could be real scientists. What I didn't realize was that it just wasn't years five and six. It was way back in the kindy stage. They were using them. They were looking through the microscopes. They were drawing what they saw. They were talking about it. And um, we heard already the importance of STEM, but really STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and maths. So by doing things like music, when you're a little kid, you're learning to count, come in on the beat. So all of this is starting really early. As a neuroscientist, I know that we've got the same number of brain cells as we were born with. Well, I hope I still have, but they're the very same cells. Every other cell in your body turns over, but those nerve cells stay. But how elaborate they get depends on your experience. And the earlier you get that experience, the more complex your brain will be. There was a study in Sweden that showed if you're going for value for money, and we need this for West Australia and Australia and the world to be able to have STEM at the heart of a better future, the study showed that for every dollar you invested, it was much better spent the earlier you started. So if you started with kindy and preschool, you would get a value 18 times as much as taking that message to a high school student at year 10, 11 or 12. So it just makes sense. The earlier we start, the better it's going to work. And you know, the other thing I love about this program is that it is regionally based too, because there are so many experiences that kids can get in the country that we don't have here. Watching, obviously, the migratory birds coming into Broome. Why are they there some time of the year? Why aren't there others? all of these things that you can learn as a kid and build it into your future. I don't know about you, but my grandkids have said to me and my kids said to me, they would see the moon, it's amazing. We all have the best sky in the world here in Australia and kids from the beginning can latch on to that. My four-year-old grandson, Tom, always wants to watch the Skylab going over the sky. You can go on a website and find out when it's happening. It's so bright. It's brighter than almost anything except the moon. He now knows there are people up there. I want to grow up and be one of them. All of these experiences you can get at an early stage. One other thing I want to say, and it's so close to my heart, is that I'm working with the neurodiverse community a lot more now. One in 68 kids in WA, and I think it's Australia wide, are diagnosed with autism. I see autism, it's not a disorder, it's just a slightly different version of how we are. Everybody's on spectrums for something, I'm probably on about three, but also we have dyslexia and the, all the other things that make up the rich tapestry of people. Yet we know young people struggle in school if they're autistic. The earlier we can start working with them, the earlier we can make sure that one, they fit in and have a happier life, but two, they contribute. We wouldn't be here doing what we are today without Isaac Newton, Einstein and Steve Jobs. 
all of those on the spectrum. So bringing to young people a STEM program for so many young people with autism just latch on and understand and want to be part of it. So for me, this is just an amazing program. I want to congratulate everyone who's taken part in it because I know from the beginning that we can really build an Australia we want. It's these young people, we owe it to them. We must reach out to them. It's not only supporting them, it's supporting their entire families and building a richer community. Congratulations to everyone who's been involved in this program. I give you three cheers from across here and my gosh, five years, let's go for that. But boy, this is a program that's got to be there in perpetuity. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you for sharing your stories and your expertise with us. It's been a real privilege to have you here today. Much appreciate it. And I'll now introduce our final speaker for this morning. Uh, also a real privilege to have Ms. Haritza Zanidis, who is the Centre Director at Bamboo Early Learning Centre in Glen Waverley in Victoria. Bamboo is the national winner of the Little Scientist Early STEM Award for 2020. There's fabulous work happening at your place, Haritza. Thank Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, uh, past, present and future. Um, I'd just like to say that we are so happy when we received that phone call. It was very out of the blue, um, very proud um, to be not only be acknowledged, but also to receive national winner has been, we've all been stoked about um, this amazing um, recognition of the program and things that were happening within our, particularly in our four-year-old kindergarten program. It has been a challenging year with COVID with many ups and downs, but the one thing that we were focused on from the very beginning was to keep things um, as normal as possible, as happy and just focusing on on the core of what we do which is um, not only nurturing a safe environment but allowing the children to come and play and learn through play when we received the email about the little scientists um, award because I knew of how long this project was going on so our project was the making of little rocket engineers is our title um, however it encompasses many many little projects that were taking place um, initially started from the children and their interest in SpaceX and the moon, as Lynn was mentioning. Um, what I love about this position statement, it, it really highlights the importance of our role in nurturing the children's uh, learning, play, knowledge, curiosity, wonder, um, and the importance of STEM in early childhood education. What we do at this, um, at our centre level is even from the baby's room, the, it is the foundation um, to the love of STEM in the future, you, particularly um, with, you know, so much um, talk in the media as well about women in STEM and um, just nurturing um, the children's love for learning um, Inquiry-based learning is the way to do that. It nurtures them as creative thinkers. Um, it also allows us to co-construct knowledge with the children and sustain uh, their thinking through this whole research process. And the way that's come about is through encompassing all the curriculum areas, not just focusing on one. So I love the way um, that arts was mentioned because arts and visual representations and uh, respecting the children's work and having that on display and allowing them to revisit their learning is key to, um, you know, developing those brain neurons and um, in the early years and um, also their confidence and their sense of agency and allowing um, the children to take over their learning in collaboration with the teachers. Um, I also love the position statement, how it looks at, it advocates at the different Level. So like what would be our responsibility as a, as a director of a centre um, and at Bamboo too, we really value um, professional learning and development uh, for our educators. I think that's key. Um, and that's what we want to nurture in the children as well. The love for learning always um, and, you know, not just in the early years, but 
being a little bit more lunar. Um, I'd just like to say thank you again. Um, I feel really privileged to be a part of, part of this morning and also um, all of you, um, but also very proud of um, our teachers. And we, at our centre, we have multiple teachers. Um, we have, actually, we have seven teachers. So six and one studying to be a teacher um, when, you know, the national uh, requirement is only um, two. So we're, we're pretty proud of that. Um, and I think that professional learning for educators is key um, to then provide the quality environment where the children can come and learn and hypothesize and you know transfer their learning from their home. Like Lynn gave some great examples um, of how things can happen at home and in your daily conversations and how we can um, you know, utilize STEM words and transfer the children's learning from one context to another, utilizing all the different curriculum areas. So thank you again. We're really, really proud um, as a team and um, as a center um, and really appreciate the opportunity and look forward to um, learning more. And also congratulations to you guys also for, you know, the acknowledgement from the government. I think another five years is awesome because it's only only going to get better from there. Thank you, Haritza. It's so wonderful to have your voice as a key stakeholder in this whole journey. And you can be very proud of everything that you and your whole centre community has achieved. You really exemplify everything that we advocate for in this, in this statement. Thank you. Thank you so much. So please join me in thanking all of our guest speakers this morning. It's been a wonderful um, experience to hear from you all. Without further ado, we move now to the official release of the Joint Position Statement on Early Childhood STEM Education. This position statement has been co-authored by 15 experts in early childhood STEM education, and you can see the team here on this slide. My sincere thanks to the team for their valuable contributions to this initiative. We now give you the link to the position statement, and we're also going to pop the link in the chat window for you. Through this position statement, we're recognising the importance of inquiry-based STEM exploration in early childhood education. And we highlight the critical foundations it provides for children's STEM learning journeys, lifelong curiosity and appreciation for STEM. This position statement recommends meaningful actions for early childhood educators, service managers and policy makers to support the provision of high quality evidence-based STEM education opportunities in early childhood. We hope this will be a useful document for communicating some key messages about early childhood STEM, and we hope it will be an accessible resource for you and the stakeholders with whom you work.